floss tubers welcome to take two of this week's video um it's monday may the 23rd uh, i want to take a second and say thank you everyone for all of your well wishes on my back feeling better it's finally starting to feel better thank you also for all of the, the happy birthday wishes both here and on facebook it was a lovely day we went out my husband and i and went out to dinner on saturday night and then went and saw wicked which was great and then sunday um I wasn't feeling up to doing a video, kind of in a little wo weird wonky mood, um, but you know, went and had dinner at my parents' house. It was a lovely day. So uh, stitching wise, it's been kind of crazy. Um, this past week with my back hurting so much, stitching was minimal. Um, so I have quite a few holdovers. Plus then this weekend was just busy. I actually haven't started anything since Friday. Ah, don't worry, I'm making up for it this week. Um, just this weekend. I started something Friday and then Saturday and Sunday just, it didn't happen. Uh, had a lot of stuff going on at school for the kids. Last week was the last full week of school. This week they have Friday off and next week they have Monday off because of the Memorial Day holiday. And then they get out on a week from Friday and a half day. And I'm like, seriously, let's just skip the Friday and Monday holiday and have them get out of school on Wednesday would make more sense to me. No one asked me. <sighs> so um, David has his last field trip of the year on Thursday to the zoo. So I'll be going to that with him. Um, though I'm going as a parent attendee instead of as a chaperone, which is a whole lot easier to do. So we'll see what goes on this week. Who knows? Um, like I told you guys last week, uh, I skipped the q a and the stash acquisitions for last week just because i wasn't feeling up to it so i've got a lot so sit back enjoy relax um and again these are in no particular order because i had them all written out for last week's video and then i had a few that i pulled up from this week's video and then some other people who are just apparently recently discovering me are making comments on old videos so these are in no particular order um tom jerry asked if i can make a video showing off my needle minder collection Probably not. Um, the reason being, you know, I've got all these needle minders back here on my one and this one is open and ready for use. But I have a needle minder on every single project that is not perforated paper. And as and I am in triple digits now for all of my projects. Um, so to do an actual video on all of my needle minders, I could possibly do one of the ones that aren't in use, but everything else that is in use, that would be way too much of a hassle. So um, I show off needle minders all the time. Just, I would say stick around and you'll eventually see them all. Um, Tammy Neal said, when you use B5200, do you divide the strands like regular DMC colors? Yeah, it's a regular six strand floss. It's just another color version of it. It does come in cotton pearl and that sort of thing, but I just usually get this, my cone of it is the six strand floss like everything else. Um, novice stitcher said that she's doing her first mill hill. Can I show her a close up of a piece I've already completed and cut out? I wish I could, but the only ones that I actually have fully completed are Christmas ornaments and they are packed away right now. Um, she was questioned how much, um, or how close to cut it. Uh, I, oh, it gives instructions on the mill hill. Um, I go, you know, wherever the stitch ends, I usually cut to the hole, like the hole that's right after the stitch will get cut in half. I don't know how better way really to describe it. Um, let me see. Hold on. I've got, well, and if you look at the kits, okay, here's one. This is, I have my, it's not a piece I worked on this week, but okay. Say, let's pretend for a second that this is a completed piece. Okay. Say this was, this piece was fully done and ready to go. You see how, let me find the fact so you don't see me through this. Okay. You see how it goes to right there, that stitch? Say that was the furthest stitch out. I would cut to the squares or to the circles that are right on the outside of that square. Does that make sense? Let me see, do I have something that I can point with? That's a little bit sharper. Here, don't ask why this is in here. So let's get this a little bit closer. So you see there's the square. I would cut to these circles and I would cut those circles in half. That makes sense. Hope so. Um, when I can get <laughs> either when I FFO the mill hill kits I have completed that I haven't FFO'd, 
or when I get the Christmas ornaments out, I can show that a little bit closer. Um, she also asked if I've ever started multiple projects on a single fabric, like Prairie School or any of the other ones that I'm doing, and found after starting several that I've miscounted the spacing and had to frog it out. Not yet. I'm knocking on wood. Hopefully it won't happen, but no, not yet. Um, Emily Chadwick said, have, if I had to pick a favorite whip, what would it be? I don't know. I've had this question for two weeks and I keep trying to figure out what I'd say it is. And I really don't know. Um, I have a lot that I love. I love all of my projects. I wouldn't be working on any of them if I didn't love them. Um, I love my chatelaines. I love my mirrors. I don't know. I don't have one. They're all my favorites. How's that? They're all my favorites. I don't know. Um, let's see here. Uh, Stephanie Watson said that she loves the Magical Creatures calendar and would love to do it, but the frame intimidates me a bit. Do, you ha do I have any tips or suggestions on it? <laughs> well, this first part isn't going to help relieve your concern in the Stitch Along group on Facebook. Um, and I'll put a link to the group below. I'll try to remember to. Um, <laughs> I think the overwhelming majority of us had issues with the border. Miscounting it somewhere, it, it's a gorgeous border, it's an intricate border, and it's easy to miscount that border. Um, my personal recommendation, and this won't work for everyone, is to do the entire border first. Because the, la it, the, the pattern comes with a full all finished pattern but there's also an option to do it month by month and I think someone found an issue when they were doing the pattern month by month um, that caused some things to be off if you do the entire border then if you find you know when you're getting to the end of the border that you have miscounted somewhere you're just having to deal with the border the last thing you want to do is to get to the bottom row you know October November December and find that you screwed up somewhere in March and everything else is screwed up. So it's a lot easier because I have some errors on my border. The cor Those corners are just crazy. Um, so I do have some errors, but I can, am able to adjust it within the months so you can't tell. But my border all matches up and my borders on the inside all match up. And that's ultimately what's most important. And since I've got that, I can adjust it. You know, if I have the little, you know, extra embellishment doohickeys are off somewhere and I have to adjust accordingly. I can do that. That's no big deal. Um, but I know my border is done. So that would honestly be my recommendation is um, to do the entire border before you do any of the interior first. And then I would also say if and when, <laughs> because I did it and so did the majority of the group, if and when you mess up on that border, that's okay. It's a rite of passage. Just curse the frog, pick him out and let go on. Uh, Stitching My Love said, what is what threads are better with Mohs sale, cotton or silk? They're both wonderful. They both, um, it, it depends on how you want to use them. Cotton is just your normal, it, it's a DMC base. So it's like working with any other DMC thread. Her silks are more satiny than like the dinky dyes or anything, or the, um, the Gloriana's or anything else like that. Uh, so they can be a little bit trickier to work with, but the colors are gorgeous. So honestly, you know, I've been pleased with both. It, the The cottons are cheaper, so if you're looking for a financial, per, financially, which is better, I would go with the cottons. Um, but I like working on both, and they both give different effects. Michelle Ellis said that she'd love to do a stitch along, but she isn't sure where to find them. Can I point her in the right direction of a few to check out? Well, I can point you to Stitch Mania. I'll put a link to Mania below. Um, there, the very the pinned post on the top of the Stitch Mania page talks all about our stitch alongs, um, our quote unquote rules or lack thereof, because we personally are of the philosophy, Garrett and I, that we don't have time to police whether or not you're doing it right. And so we want everyone to be able to participate, that you guys can join in at any time. We usually have a theme instead of a specific piece, but even when we do have a specific piece, if you don't want to work on that piece but still want to participate and, and be friendly with everyone and, and enjoy that camaraderie, you can, you know, we have ways to get around it. You don't have to ask permission for what we got to use. Um, we're not going to penalize you if, say, the stitch along started on the first of the month, but you don't join our group until the fifth. We're not going to say, no, sorry, you weren't here the first, you can't join. Um, 
we're very, very flexible. Uh, some groups and some sit alongs are much more rigid and focused and, and specific in their rules, and that's fine. And if people like that, that's great. Um, Garrett and I don't have time for that. <laughs> we we, we want to keep mainly just the two of us as admins for now. Um, we would rather everyone be having fun with their stitching and enjoying and participating and getting to know other people and, you know, taking on a common theme um, for a project, whether it's the only project they work on that month or if they work on a thousand other projects that month. We like building that sort of camaraderie and our members seem to be fond of that as well. So in that post um, on Stitch Media, it'll give you the links for the current stitch alongs that are going on this month, the stitch alongs that are scheduled for next month, and then a link to all of the other stitch alongs for the year because we are planned out for the rest of 2015 or 2016 and we will be working on scheduling out for 2017 over the summer. Uh, let's see here. Joan Perkins, hey Katie, what size and count is my Prairie Schooler Alphabet fabric? And you know, I told you to comment here. <laughs> so I look it up and then I didn't actually look it up. Okay, hold on. Give me a second. It's right over here. I can get to it. It is. I got a special cut from Stephanie. It is a 24 by 45 piece of 32 count Jobelin in toast and almond. So if you're interested in purchasing a special cut, I've talked with Stephanie before. I've talked with Leslie from Under the Sea Fabrics before. I'm sure any other um, fabric dyers that you talk to would be willing to discuss with you whatever you may need um, and work out private arrangements for purchasing a special cut of fabric for whatever you may need that's outside of your normal fat quarters fat house and i kicked this sorry okay uh auntie jen stitches says uh, how where do you store your she had a few questions how where do you store your perforated paper um right now it's kind of i have See, all right. I have these types of boxes on top of my one little section where I have things organized. Um, and I have, it's not, I don't have one in this one, but I'll put perforated paper just sticking up on here or I'll have it sitting on the shelf laying flat. I do not put it with the rest of my fabrics. Um, let's see here. I bought my first package. Uh, and before I even had a chance to use it, the plastic wrap started shrinking and the whole thing started curling. I've never had that happen before. Um, so I'm not sure why it would do that. Uh, I obviously when I open it up, the pet, the plastic covering is gone and I just store it like you would store paper. Um, but I've never had that happen before. Uh, let's see here. Did I take advantage of the Brooks books 50% off sale? Yes. <laughs> Not as bad as I could have because I have so many of Brooks patterns already, but I do have two patterns that came since I last did a, uh, showed any haul. And so you guys will see that when we get to stash positions. And then did I ever try a cute snap? Nope. And I'm not interested. Um, and that sounds kind of mean and it's not meant to be. Um, I like my hoop. I am comfortable with my hoop. I can stitch anything happily with my hoop. I have no interests in moving to Q snaps. I have no interests in frames. I have no interest in a lap stand. I have no interest in any of that. Um, and maybe, you know, that's maybe one thing I'm kind of rigid on. I've been stitching for so long with my hoop that I just, you know, I like the feel of it in my hand. I have it worked out so I can stitch everything from a small project to my massively huge projects with huge fabric. And I've got it figured out how I adjust to fix the fabric around me. I haven't, and I'm just not really interested. Let's say here, uh, Nancy Ashcroft. First off, sorry, Nancy, that I missed your question. I didn't mean to. Uh, she started her first hate for mania, and she's stitching it on a key snap. Um, she's struggling with the excess fabric being in the way. How do you keep the extra fabric on, under control when you're working yours in a hoop? Well, if you're using a key snap, they've got all those covers. Um, they're not as popular for people that use hoops, unfortunately. Um, but I would get, if you're using, if you're doing it on a Q-snap, just get a Q-snap cover and you should be able to 
bunch a lot of your fabric into that from my understanding again don't use cute snaps so <laughs> um but you should be able to to fold the fabric into the cover and keep it out of the way mine when i'm ready to start stitching i'm usually sitting there with the hoop and the fabric is pushed over one arm or the other and it's out of the way and i mean it's nothing really scientific that i can really describe it's just pushed out of the way sorry um molly peckham said that she has a question it's a little personal um she's wondering how i've been doing pain wise <laughs> as last week shows not so great um depends on the day thank you for asking molly i don't mind answering this personal question um it depends on the day uh, i have not gotten any sort of official diagnosis with anything like fibromyalgia yet i have some other diagnoses that i'm dealing with uh but um some days i'm fine some days i'm not uh it's just a day by day uh, it's nowhere near as bad as some people out there are dealing with um but I think this year, when I go back for my next appointment um, <clears throat> in the next couple months, that I'm going to start more aggressively searching the cause of some of the pain that I have. Um, some of it may be, especially since I have, you know, I've I've lost 50 pounds. So you know, weight is one thing, but I've lost the majority of where I can without having surgery and other parts of me like the girls but anyway um so i don't know if it's just a weight thing i don't know if there's something else going on <sighs> but i'm okay ish most days um let's see here uh michelle ellis asked where she could get the soda stitch princess chart if you go there are two there are several places apparently on either etsy or a couple other shops online to do it i buy all of my soda stitch pieces from ebay if you go to eBay and look up Sew to Stitch, you'll find Jeannie's Cross Stitch, and she's an official um, distributor for Sew to Stitch patterns, and that's where I've gotten all of mine from. Um, uh, Putty Cook 3 says, Katie, where did you say you had gotten the ammo box for my Krynic threads? Um, I got mine from Midway USA. I will post a link to the actual specific box below because it took me a while to find it and I have saved that bookmark so that I can not have to search for it again. So I'll put a link to it below. Um, Tom Jerry asked, what colors am I using for the top of my pumpkin passport? Um, it's all DMC. It's not one floss, but I'm, cause it's, I'm using, I'm making the fourth doctor's scarf. Um, but it's all DMC colors. It is 327. 842, 840, 3820, 900, 3051, and 3768. And then I kind of have it divided up and go from there. But it's all just regular DMC. Have not found a really cool floss that is the fourth Doctor's Color. Dyers out there, floss dyers, if you can figure out a way to dye a floss to be the fourth Doctor's scarf, I would, that would be awesome. Uh, crafty creative Claire um, so that she loves the Glendon Place dessert mandalas are there any in that range that I don't like I like them all I am not as big of a fan of the ones that are square um, I think cherries Jubilee is one which is unfortunate because I love cherries um, I think that's one of them I have them all uh, because of course duh um, but I prefer the rounded mandalas to the the square boxy ones but that's just me um, hello. Are you dressed? Oh, you have clothes on. Okay, you want to come and say hi for a second, sickly boy? Okay, you're just going to come and say hi for just a second, okay? Oh, don't step on the minders. Sorry, I've got needle minders over here to show. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Everyone wants to know when you're going to start stitching again because they would love to see more stitching from you. Maybe soon, maybe this weekend when you're on vacation. You think that'd be a good idea? Can you talk? Yes. Okay, they can't hear you whisper. Yes. Yes, okay. Well, can you wave hi to everybody and say thank you for being nice and commenting? And say goodbye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Yep, you need help? There you go. Bye, sweet boy. 
and then um, Melissa O'Brien, last Q&A for this time, said that uh, she asked about the Quaker Diamond pattern that I'm doing from Rosewood Manor, and she asked which floss I am using. I am using the Valdani floss. I got the, the balls, and I'll show him when, when I get to the whip. I'll pull out the little floss balls of Valdani, um, and it works great. I have no issues with it. I know that they are expensive. Um, I got... Uh, and that's the only one I have kitted up because those Valdani's are expensive, but I really like the colors on it and, uh, and they work really nicely. So, so that's my Q and A for the week. Told you I had a lot of questions. Um, as always, if I missed your question or anything else, you know, feel free to ask it again below and I will hopefully get to it next week. Okay. Week in review. Start with the monthly stitch alongs. First one was Magical Creatures Calendar by Clouds Factory, which is done on 32 Opal Belfast in Diva from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And here is where we are on May at this point. Slowly but surely coming along. My goal this week is to get this one finished and the next one done. If possible. The next one being my postcards from the world, also by Cloud Factory, which is on 32 Jobelin in Ice Goddess from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie, also using flosses and silks from Moe's. And here is where we are with New Delhi at this point. The dude in the corner looks really creepy right now, I know. But I've got, you know, a good chunk of it done, got some more to do, but I, wa I wanted to finish this, these two this week. And you see, I, I ditched the bird that was up here in favor of the um, the postmark. And I have not been to New Delhi, so I don't have a year for it. And here's the whole piece at this point. So I did have a mini finish with this next one, which is my pumpkin passport for frosted pumpkin stitchery. I finished this month's block or portion or whatever you want to call it. Um, this is on 28 Jobelin and Ice Goddess from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie using flosses and silks from Moe's. And here is, first I'll show the little grease. Here's grease, all done. So hoobianizing wise, I used the horse from Black Beauty from uh, the Once Upon a Time, uh, or not Once Upon a Time, the Storytime Sampler last year and recharted this to be a horse. And this is the 10th Doctor. He's got his little screwdriver in his hand over here. It's much easier to see in person, but it's a little silver Krynik with a little blue Krynik French knot at the top. And that's 10. Arthur the Horse from the Girl in the Fireplace episode. Um, this little pot was already uh, charted, but I added some blue French, little light blue French knots for Forget-Me-Nots in honor of Donna Noble. And then I did the, a little trio of the black cubes from the Power of Three episode. I also modified this top building so it is the Acropolis um, instead of just another Santorini building. And then I added the Greek flag up here to the top of that. And because I recharted him, I had to add some extra little colors and spots in here, but I'm really happy with it. I was not overly thrilled with this block when it first came out, but I'm pleased with how it turned out. So here is the whole piece as it stands out. We have one more portion for June. So I'm gonna keep this out this week. I'm gonna to try to get more of the border along the bottom done. Cause what I would like to have done is when June is finished, that the entire top of this is done. So the last part of this scallop border on the top needs to be finished. And then I'll need to start do the white underneath the, let's go on an adventure and do more of the, for scarf because it goes all the way through. So, so I'll keep working on it and hopefully get some more border done this week. But grease is finished. So whatever I can get done on this at this point is bonus. Um, let's see here. Next ones I'm just going to kind of rush through because I really didn't work on them this week. My focus for a finished piece is my Mediterranean flavors by dimensions. Didn't really work on it. So see, here it is still where it was. My little minder from Minding My Minders. Told you there was some wonkiness this week with stitching. Uh, then my flossable stitch along was, or uh, is the Easter Fairy by Mirabilia. Also did not work on this one this week, but I'll show it to you anyway. Hopefully I'll get to some of it this week. This is done on uh, 32 Joblin and Seahorse Shores from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. 
head. Still where it was. Tinkerbell Needle Minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. Then I also did not work on, but I blame this one because I was out. Um, the Outlander Stitch Along, I didn't work on it this week because I was out on Saturday. Um, but this is my uh, Selectronic Pattern, the Sampler Through the Stones by Crown Street Cottage. So we still have roof. Get to it. This is on um, 32 Belfast and Umbriel from Under the Sea Fabrics. So see, still got to finish the roof. And I got my Jamie Needle Miter from Minding My Minders. So. I hope we all get a little bit done on those these, this week. My uh, annual Mania Stitch Along for this past week was the, it was a Brooks Books week for me. So it was the Spirit of Oz Santa, which was timely considering I saw Wicked on Saturday. And I decided to, I went ahead and did all of the back stitching and beading that I had still to do on these guys. So the Dorothy's got her beads now in her dress and her little necklace and all of her back stitching, Scarecrow's back stitch, uh, Toto and the Tin Man are backstitched, so um, I didn't have a whole lot of time to do much else other than backstitching and beading for that this week. So I went ahead and got that done, so then the next time this comes up, I will start on a new character. Then my year of starts. I only have five to show you because it was a week. Um, first one was my Peacock Alphabet by Just Nan which I am doing on a 32 count natural linen. And here is where I got to. So start working on the middle portion. I have a little M&M needle, needle miter that I got from Gina's Unique Boutique, but I've seen them pretty much everywhere now. Then the next pattern is an electronic pattern that I will put a link to below. It was the Summertime Sampler from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, and I am doing it on 32 Belfast and Anthea from Under the Sea Fabrics. And I decided, because I had it more easily on hand at the time when I was getting ready to do this, that I'm doing it in flosses from Jottery instead of from Moe's. And I got the first border done. Look, doesn't it match really nicely? <laughs> so there's the first border for the first day done and that is actually the um the floss that i'm using it came with my floss in the month this month that you'll see but it is called island j and that's the floss from jottery it's really pretty i haven't decided what the second one for that block is going to be yet but i will when i pull it back up as a whip then the next one was a Mill Hill kit. It was gifts galore. And here is where I got to. Got some pretty good progress done on the tree. Yes, there's thread that I'm carrying behind it. Sorry if I'm rushing. I can see that we're already at almost half an hour and got a lot more to do. Plus, and then it's also getting close to dinner time, so. Then the next one is another electronic pattern. It is my latest Heaven and Earth design. It is Tree of Life, and this is where I got to. I am doing this one cross country instead of just by columns. And then doing minimal parking, which I defined as I still had more to do with this thread and didn't feel like finishing it off, so it's staying where it's supposed to be. <laughs> so, and then I have a little Heaven and Earth design needle minder. And then the last new start that I had for this week, um, I did my Rocking Horse by Mill Hill. And here is where he is at this point. So. The start that I was supposed to start this week and didn't is my Teacup by Vermilion Citri, and I'm rolling that over to the end of this upcoming week. So it'll get done. I'm not skipping a start. I'm just going to have to get them all done this week. I did work on three whips this week. Um, first one was Quaker Diamonds by Rosewood Manor. And I'm doing this on a 28 Cashel Solo die from Silk Weavers. And I'll pull out the floss in just a second. But 
here is where I was able to get to this week. Got a little folded mark there, but I was pleased. And then I have my Jamie and uh, Claire Needleminder from Minding My Minders. And yeah, I bought the, the thread pack for the Valdani. So it's all these little balls of floss and they're so cute. And you just unscroll them from the balls and you use them as is because it's already three stranded. And it's just, but I love the colors. I think they're beautiful. And they've been very lovely to work with. So they are worth the money if you want to save up for it. Then the next whip that I worked on was Queen Bee from the Cross Stitch and Needlework 2015, um, spring 2015 issue. And I'm doing that one on 28 Lugana in Chalice from Picture This Plus. And here is where we got to. Finished up the wings and started some of the black and started this little bumblebee up here. I've got my little bumblebee girl needle minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. And then the last whip that I worked on this week was Queen of Quite a Lot by the Scarlet House. And I'm also doing this one on 32 count natural linen. And here's where I am. I finished the black for Queen and started quite. And have my little queen of everything needle minder from Kim. So I'm gonna try, I think, to finish out the black first everywhere before I go and fill in that red color. And I'm using the D, it, it's charted for NPI. No, I'm using DMC for this. I like using my specialty flosses. I am not going out and spending that money on black. No. So that was my week this week. Let's go ahead and move and look to see what my plans are for this upcoming week. Um, I will keep working. My goal, my big goal for this week is to get Magical Creatures and the postcards done for this week um, so that I can have all my monthly stitch alongs done with a couple of days to spare. That will be nice. I'll continue working or I'll hopefully work on my Focus for a Finish with Mediterranean Flavors. Hopefully work on my Easter Fairy for Flossable, the Outlander Stitch Along next Saturday. Um, for my annual Mania Stitch Along this week, it is a, a Chatelaine week for me and it's the Baltic Sea Mandala is up for the count this week. And I am doing that one on 32 Lugana in Mercedes from Picture This Plus. Let's pull up where we are at this point. Ah, uh, yes, I had started working with some of the Rainbow Gallery Petite Treasure Braid on this when I last worked on it, so I'll probably continue with that. See that sparkle in the corner? Pretty blues. And then have my Starfish Needle Minder from Gina's Unique Boutique. I like working on my Chatelaines. They might be my favorite whips. Maybe. I don't know. You don't ask someone with triple digit whips which one is their favorite. It's like asking which child is your favorite. It just doesn't work. Love you, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> then tomorrow actually is our color a day stitch along for May. Uh, we have every, the 24th of every month, we do a different color a day. And tomorrow is uh, red, which is. Uh, I forget the formal name of the stitch along, but it's the red one. Um, oh, Stitchers in Red. That's what we called it. And I am going to be working on my Flames of Desire from Heaven and Earth Designs because Hello Red. And that one is done on 32 Belfast and Mine Apocalypse from Under the Sea Fabrics. One over one tent stitching. So here's where we are at this point. There's lots of plenty of red to still work on this page. So, and I started in the middle. And there's another Jamie and Claire needle minder. So I'll work on this tomorrow for a little while, get some more stitches into it in various shades of red. Yes, I know, powerful fabric. Then we move on to the year of starts. I've got lots of starts this week. Okay, 
We're just gonna go through them all. First one is an electronic pattern that I will put a link to below. It's Pretty Little Italy by Satsuma Street, and I am gonna be doing it on 32 Belfast in Snow Kissed Pines from Under the Sea Fabrics. And here is the fabric. I'll have to measure it and see if I can cut it down. But I liked the blue and white. And then my minder. I love wine. Sometimes I even wear it because I drank a lot of wine in Italy. I'm listening. I think my husband just got home from work. And my son didn't close the door all the way. Then the next one I have is What a Wonderful World from Cross Stitch Gold issue number 54. And I'm just going to be doing it on a 28 count white Lugana. I hear whoever, or maybe I don't. See, 20 count white Lugana. Woo! Um, and I've got a little champagne needle minder from Nifty Needle Nannies that I'm going to use. Then the next one is going to be Rhyme and Reasons by Just Nan. And it says, stitch for flowers, berries, and trees, celebrate joy in the birds and bees, trace the lines of leaf and flake, capture moonlight on a lake, stitch to be scary, merry, or chic, work to record, adorn, and to keep, stitch it fancy or simply plain, build fine houses and arcs in the rain, revel in... Uh, color, texture, and rhyme, and hope that your stitches will linger in time. So, and I'm going to be doing that on, and I'm going to cut this one down, 32 Joblin and Isold from Hand Eye Fabrics by Stephanie. It's pretty purple. And then I have just this little fancy bird cage needle minder from Minding My Minders. Hi. I'll be done in a little bit. Can you close the door for me, please? Then the next one that I have is my Spring Garden Fairy by Joan Elliott. And this is from the Cross Stitch and Needlework March 2014 issue. And I am doing her on 28 Jobelin in Misty Morning from Under the Sea Fabrics. And I just have this cute little unicorn cameo needle minder from Nifty Needle Manny's. Then my next new start for the week is another little Mill Hill kit. And it is Santa and Rudolph. So, got that little guy. Then, let's see, where did that go? Let's put it up here. Sorry, getting this back in here. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Then the next new start I have um, is Stitching Feeds My Heart from Silver Creek Samplers. And I am going to do that one um, on 32 Belfast and Irene from Under the Sea Fabrics. Okay, I'm going to cut this down. I'm using this. This is the same fabric I am using um, for the Orchid Intrigue, I believe is what it is. But I'll cut another piece of this down. And then I have my Blingy Queen Needle Minder from Minding My Minders. Then the next new start I have scheduled is um, from Just Cross Stitch 2014 Ornament Issue. And it is Gold Crown by Rosewood Manor, which is this one right here. And it's done almost entirely in beads, which is why I am just using a scrap piece of white or off-white Ada for it and I've got a little crown needle minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. See? Beads. Gay beads. Then let's see here. The next one that I have is a little kit that I got from Dragonfly Lotus. It's Stitching Royalty, and I'm just doing one of these, and I think, which one do I have the pattern for? Let me look real quick. Oh, 
the pattern I have is for, um, I guess it is all the same pattern. Looking closely, it's all the same pattern, just different flosses. So it got, I have all the little flosses and they all came in a little kit and it's tiny. So it'll probably be a one day project, which is fine. Don't know if I'll FFO it in one day, but I could probably stitch it in a day. Gotta love Dragonfly Lotus. Um, then my last new start is the one that was the holdover. Oops, hold on. Sorry, had to read. Um, was my holdover from this week. And it is the online pattern that I can't put a link to, but it's the Vermilion Stitcheries Teacup Collection, the May Teacup. So here is this again. And this is on 32 Belfast and Whimsical Winter from Under the Sea Fabrics. So I'll do the May Cup at the end of the week. Then I did pull out whips. I had three holdovers for my whips for this week. And then I pulled out three more. First holdover was my Queen of the Needle by Just Nan. I'll just show as a reminder. This is on 28 Jobelin in Fruit Punch from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. So here's where we were. And I have my little key needle minder from Gina's Unique Boutique. Then my next holdover was my Rainbow Parfait from Glendon Place. I like this one because even though it's not a circle, it's still circular, if that makes sense. You know what I mean. And that one is being done on 32 Lugana in Mesa from Picture This Plus. And here is where we are with it at this point. And I have my little blingy needle minder from Gina's Unique Boutique. And then my last holdover for this week. Sorry, my eyes twitching. That's the other thing. I've been having a twitching eyelid off and on for a week and it's driving me in freaking insane. Everyone that's commenting or tagging me or messaging me, I see you. I just am doing a video right now. Um, then my last holdover for this week was Rapunzel by Joan Elliott. And I'm doing that one on 28 Joblin and Isolde from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And here's where she is at this point. And then I pulled out three more just in case I get to them this week. We'll see. You never know. Um, the first one is electronic pattern. I'll put a link to it below. It's my Rarity from Pixels and Stitches. I've already finished Pinkie Pie. Rarity is up as a whip. Um, I haven't started any of the others yet. I don't think I'm scheduled to start the next one until June, but um, I've got this one little right here. So if I finish that one on the second day that I worked on it, maybe I'll finish Rarity too. That would be nice. Get another finish. Then the next week, this one I am excited about because I haven't worked on her in a while. My Raven Queen, Regina from Mirabilia. And she is done on 28 Joblin and Andromeda from Under the Sea Fabrics. And here is where she is at this point. So pretty. I love my Regina. And then I have a um, solid Maleficent Raven Queen needle minder from Gina's Unique Boutique. And Nifty Needle Nannies has them too. So I'm happy about that one. Then if I get to it this week, my next whip in rotation would actually be Rhyme and Reasons for alphabetical order. So I'm not going to show that one again. So those are my plans. Let's see how much I get done. Um, stash Quisitions. This is two weeks worth of stash. I didn't really get a lot of stash for my birthday, which was fine. Um, but anyway, uh, first off, I will show, I got my Under the Sea Fabrics, uh, Fabric of the Month for this month, and it's called Nyad, and it's so pretty. Look at how gorgeous that is. Don't know what I'm gonna do on it yet. I'm starting to work on my kitting up for June, so it may show up in a June piece. We'll see, but it's so pretty. I love the modeling on it and the color, and just, 
very very nice then i had some patterns um i had to place an order one two three stitch for um i'll show that first i needed two flosses that for some reason i hadn't purchased uh it was a gentle arts and baby spinach and classic color works and steamed broccoli maybe because baby spinach and steamed broccoli didn't sound appetizing at the time so i like spinach broccoli not so much so in order to justify the shipping for these i did buy two patterns or one pattern one kit the little kit is flip flops it's a mill hill kit i thought the colors were cute and then the other one I bought was from Little House Needleworks. It's called Lavender's Blue. And it says, Lavender's Blue, Dilly Dilly, Lavender's Green. When you are king, Dilly Dilly, I shall be queen. It's got a queen. So, duh. Then the next one, I'm not sure if I showed it before. So if I have, forgive me. I'm showing it again. Um, got the Country Cottage Needleworks next a portion of my Gingerbread Village. It's the Gingerbread Boy and Snowman. And it's got the cute little button for the Gingerbread Boy. And then I got my two Pattern of the Month series, April's and May's from Stony Creek. April's is Hang a Shining Star on the Highest Bough. And then Haul Out the Holly for May. And then my Brooks Books order, I only ordered two things, but there are two things I really wanted. First one I ordered was the Jane Austen at the Christmas Ball, because she's just beautiful. And I love Jane Austen. So that was one. And then the other one that I ordered was the Spirit of Cinderella's Fairy Godmother, who is another gorgeous one. So those are my two purchases from the 50% off sale for Brooks Books. Then I have some needle minders, because of course I do. Uh, first off was an order that I placed um, at Nifty Needle Nannies. We have a Gryffindor, a Wibbly Wobbly, Timey Wimey, Stuff, does it say Stuff? Yeah, Stuff, and a Ray needle minder. So we got Harry Potter, Doctor Who, and Star Wars. And then I got three of her books which were Romeo and Juliet, Outlander, and Written in My Heart's Blood. So yay. And then I was contacted by Brenda of Brenders, Minders, and More, um, saying that she wanted to send me a gift. And I said, oh, that's so sweet of you. Okay, here's my information. And I got these two lovely needle minders from her. It's really pretty little crown and this cameo, which is just gorgeous. I love that cameo. And so, you know, after I got this, I went and I joined her group just to, you know, take a look around and found some other cute needle minders. So now I have three needle minder shops that I'm buying from. And I was good. I only ordered two so far, but I got a, another pretty crown needle minder and then a hooked needle minder because hello, it's Hook, and Colin O'Donoghue is really nice eye candy. Very, very nice eye candy. Then I got my Jottery Threads of the Month this month, and I've already showed you one. Um, these are, okay, this one is Dragon's Flame. That one's really cool. This one is Cooper's Plumage. This one is Mardi Gras. More blue than green for the Mardi Gras, but that's okay. This is Alex the Great. These are the April 2016 um, Karen's Birdwing Butterfly. It's a limited edition. It's really pretty. Then this one is Peach Cobbler. This one is Butterfly Kisses. This one is Pink Elephants on Parade, which is now part of the main line. I already had some from, sorry, 
here. Um, I already had some from when I was from the when it was a limited edition, but now it's in the main line. This is Alaskan Beauty, and this one is a Rose Ringed Parakeet. Got a look. I had these easily at hand. <laughs> this is why I did the start working with Jottery on the summertime sampler because these I had literally gotten these I think the same day that I was gonna start that sampler. So I'm like, ooh, but this is perfect. I'll just use this instead of going upstairs. Because I think my back was still not so great that day. Then the last thing I got this time around, I was gonna say this last week, but it was at some point last two weeks. Um, I got my latest cross stitch and needlework um, edition. This is the summer 2016 issue. This is a Joan Elliott. That's just, I, that's so not what I usually think of when I think of Joan Elliott, but that's just so pretty. So I'll do a quick flip through of just the patterns. Not the patterns, but you know what I mean. Uh, this is Garden Sampler, which is very pretty. Let's see, what does this say on here? It's looking real quick. The Garden Sampler by Linda Bird. Then we've got summertime plant pokes. So like you can make little signs for your plants in whatever way you want to. Then there's some watercolor flowers. These are really pretty. I like those. Let's see. Then we have a floral purse set. I like the design. I probably wouldn't make it into a purse though. I don't know. Having a stitching as a purse or a tote just kind of worries me. This is fun in the sun. Let's see. Next one we've got um, gingham, gingham Galore and it has a whole article about stitching on gingham. But obviously you don't have to. Um, here is a color shift mandala. Is really cool it would also be very cool with variegated floss Let's see here next one we've got painted feathers i can see that being done in lots of different color schemes um here is Ham happy camper from emma congan This one is the Joan Elliott. This is Children by the Seaside. I think it's just awesome. Then let's see here. We have some breezy sailboats, a trio of sailboats that are cute. Probably be relatively quick stitches. Here is Barnyard Silhouettes. You got a goat and some chickens and a pig. A quaint owl sampler for those of you who love owls out there. Let's see what's next. There are Christmas sampler ornaments. Um, sorry, I was reading something. These cute little trio of ornaments kind of go with that mandala color wise. And then that appears to be it. Yeah. So, my upcoming plans. Um, I have to get all of June kitted up this week so I can do my June video, um, probably this upcoming weekend. Uh, and then just stitch and go through everything else. So, I hope everyone has a wonderful week, and I will see you guys next time.